enjoy a program I hope you'll enjoy uh, called Global Warming Exposed. Uh, I am a meteorologist. I'm originally from Groton, Connecticut. I worked in television for 25 years in uh, Maine, Florida, well, actually Boston, then Florida, then here in Connecticut. And uh, the way I like to do these programs is to talk about the pictures, and then at the end I like to do the Q&A, okay? So I'll, I'll, at the end I'll do my best to answer whatever questions you might have uh, for as long as it takes. But uh, this is a, quite a, uh, a lot of slides. This is about 350, so uh, we have to get through uh, them. So, this is uh, global warming exposed. The first thing I'd like to say is that the climate of the Earth is always changing and always will. You hear people say, what, you don't believe in climate change? Well, I believe the climate changes, yes. The last two million years of the Earth have been dominated by ice ages. There's been 17 of these ice ages uh, during this time, uh, lasting an average of 75 to 100,000 years. Now, the last ice age was over by about 10,000 years ago, and we moved into the wonderful time we live in. It's the interglacial, the time between the ice ages. This is a very good time to be here. In fact, humanity has pros prospered the most during the warmer interglacial. Humans have been around for a long time. Uh, the real civilization never really happened until it got warmer. Now, during this time, the warmer time, in the last couple of hundred years, we've discovered hydrocarbons, um, coal uh, and oil, and natural gas and things like that. And these things basically power the world. These are what, these are the, it's hydrocarbons that make the world's energy and drive uh, our cars, our planes. Uh, life expectancy has uh, skyrocketed since 1850 with the uh, improvement of life, which has been brought about by the uh, discovery of hydrocarbons. In 1850, the average person lived to be 38. Today, it's approaching 79. And most of our energy comes from burning fossil fuels. 86% uh, of U.S. Uh, energy consumption is fossil fuels. Uh, but we're told today that this is bad, that we shouldn't be doing this. Uh, because when we do burn fossil fuels, we release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Lately, I've been hearing people talk about carbon pollution. It's not carbon pollution. This is carbon dioxide we're talking about, not carbon. Now, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere currently is 390 parts per million. So it's a trace gas. There's very little of it. That's a 39% increase since the start of the Industrial Revolution, roughly 1850. Now, we are told that continued use of fossil fuels to make energy will cause a dramatic warming of the Earth's temperature in the next hundred years. Is there any credible scientific evidence that using fossil fuels to make energy is warming the Earth now and will warm it significantly in the future? That's my question. First, we must look at the climate of the past for historical context of where we are today. You cannot have an appreciation for the today's temperature unless you know the past. I mean, that's why we teach history in school, right? You've got to have an appreciation for that. So how do we know what the climate of the past was? Well, we know from various volumes of evidence that it was once warmer in the past, and it has been colder in the past. Uh, physical evidence of ice ages. This was Connecticut, say, 15,000 years ago. This would be the Connecticut shoreline and what was at one time a lake, which was Long Island Sound. So we were buried under a mile of ice. Uh, there's evidence for that. Glacial scouring of rocks in Central Park by the ice, taking stones and rubbing it over the uh, larger bedrock. So this kind of evidence is all over the place. Uh, you've probably seen these big boulders spread all over Connecticut. These are erratics left from the retreat of the glacier. Uh, we also can go to a place called the Boreal Forest. The Boreal Forest is the biggest forest in the world. It covers uh, most of Siberia and northern Europe, most of Canada, and up into Alaska. Now, today, <clears throat> the boreal forest is hundreds of miles from the Arctic coast. So there's the Arctic coast, and here's the northern uh, tree line. So today, it's hundreds of miles from the coast. Uh, north here is frozen tundra. Now, in that tundra, there are old, dead trees. And what we can do is radiocarbon date them uh, to find out how old they are. And lo and behold, it turns out they're three to 9,000 years old. So what does that tell you? It was a lot warmer three to 9,000 years ago. 
one to four degrees Fahrenheit warmer than today because the trees were growing right up to the Arctic coast. So when people claim today the Earth is record warm, they are either unaware of this or won't reference it. Now, another interesting place to go is Greenland. In the middle of Greenland, right about here, the ice is two miles thick. Wow. It's a lot of ice. And what we can do is we can drill down into that ice and extract long cores of it, long tubes. And you can actually see the seasons. The summers are the lighter shade and the winters are the darker. And by counting the layers, we can measure how old the ice is. In the ice, there are little bubbles of ancient atmosphere, hundreds of thousands of years old. And by using differences in the abundance of oxygen-18 and oxygen-16, uh, we can use these uh, relative abund abundances as a substitute or proxy for temperature. These are isotopes of oxygen. And what they tell us is that we've had one, two, three, four ice ages in the last 425,000 years, and five interglacials. And that's us right there. These last 75 to 100,000 years, you can see the interglacials are much shorter. The coldest periods of the ice ages were 14 and a half degrees Fahrenheit colder than today. So it's not just a little colder, it's a lot colder. This is the last 10,000 years of temperature derived from the ice cores in Greenland. And the red line is today's average temperature of the Earth. So you can see the temperature has changed a lot and that it was mostly warmer than today for most of the last 10,000 years. This is the last uh, four or 5,000 years, I should say. And you can see warm periods and more recently some colder periods. And again, the red line is today's temperature. This is the last 2,000 years. And here is today's temperature. And we can see an upward and downward trend in the temperature. Uh, from about 800 to 1,200 or so, there was a period known as the medieval warm period. During this time, the Vikings were very active, clubbing people over the head, and worse, uh, doing a lot of conquering. And they actually had established colonies in southern Greenland with animals and farming, and it was warmer then. In the year 1000, Leif Erikson took some men and going on a story that he had heard that there was land to the west of Greenland, sailed to the west, and lo and behold, discovered Canada almost 500 years before Columbus. And they settled up in here, in the meadows. But shortly after their arrival, the temperature of the earth began to go down. And eventually it just got so cold, they abandoned uh, to Greenland. And then by 1350, they had had enough of Greenland and went back to Europe. It just was getting too cold because we were slipping into what's known as the Little Ice Age, which is, depending on your definition, roughly 1300 to some say 1850, some say 1900. Now, uh, this is a painting from the Netherlands in 1577, a harbor frozen that does not freeze today. This is a painting from the pond of Venice, frozen in 1709, doesn't freeze today. And on the Thames, uh, occasionally during this little ice age, they would have what they called frost fairs. Uh, during this cold time, uh, the river froze and some clever uh, business people took some tents out onto the river and created the first mall. <laughs> literally. Uh, they had tents on one side and people would walk up and down the other and literally, the at least in the western world, the first uh, mall was on the ice. The last, I the last ice fair, though, was in um, 1814.